Hello, I'm Annabelle Camp, and I will be demonstrating how to create fabric labels for textile collections. So I have everything you should need out here, minus a sink and an ironing board. So I have cotton troll tape. This is quarter inch cotton troll tape. And then this is just a substrate to write on. This is a quarter millimeter micron pen. It has a fine tip for creating nice legible numbers or letters. I have an iron for heat setting my ink as well as a 1% solution of Orbis WA paste, which will be used for cleaning the labels. And that can be purchased at an outdoor supply store, such as Tractor Supply. Here I have hair silk. It's a nice fine silk that shouldn't put in any unnecessary weight or stress on your collection textile. A needle, and then just fabric scissors for the tool tape and thread scissors. So when you have all of this supplies, um, you can start, as the list says, with writing out your numbers. And typically you might want to do this in large batches where you can just write out multiple numbers, then move on to your heat setting, washing, etc. The most difficult part of this process is making sure you have good tension so that you have a nice crisp line in your numbers. You can do this in multiple ways. Um, you could just wrap it around and pin it. You could wrap it around multiple times. Or what I like to do is just use my fingers to create really good tension and then write the numbers in. If you are writing multiple labels at a time, just make sure that you have enough space in between each number so that you can create little fold overs of the ends. There's, these fold overs are really essential. They create a nice clean label and they also prevent unraveling of that troll tape. So once you have the numbers written, you're going to heat set them using an iron on your cotton setting for about a minute, just to make sure that none of the ink is going to wash off in case of a water event. Then you just want to rinse your troll tape in an Orvis solution. Make sure that the troll tape gets fully saturated and that you rinse all of the Orvis out completely. You don't want any bubbles or any smell um, remaining. Once it's rinsed, obviously it's going to be wet, so you need to dry it. You can either blot it dry or I like to use the iron. And that's really great because you get it nice and flat and everything's straight. And also when it, the label is damp, you can go ahead and cut these. And when it's damp and warm, you can just create those little folds with your fingers. It's much easier to create the crease that way I found than trying to go in and create it with an iron. So once you have your labels and they have their little fold overs, you can begin sewing on the collection textile. Obviously, if, you work, if you're working with a collection textile, you wanna make sure that all of this is far away from that piece. However, today I'm demonstrating on a study collection piece, so I'm not quite as worried. So these are two ways that you can attach your textile label to your piece. Um, and what's really important when you go to label a textile is that you think systematically about the placement of that label, just like any other object. Um, some people might put it on the edge, they might put it on a specific corner. If it's a costume, you might put it in the collar, etc. Just I would speak with your collections care team and any curators to make sure that there's a systematic way of labeling things so that people can find the number easily without a lot of unnecessary handling. So these are two ways that a label could be attached. In this way, it's only attached on one side, as you see here. So on this end, I just tack down that loose end using cotton. I don't need the hair silk here, save a little money. Um, and just use cotton because it's not going into the collection textile. And then the hair silk can be used around all three sides at this end to make sure that it's secure. And this is really nice. I actually prefer this because you can have this hanging out in storage so that it's more easy to, to find. But in um, on display, you can simply tuck it behind so you don't have to see it. This method I think is probably more common and this utilizes hair silk whip stitches around all four edges. And in this example, I've used blue hair silk in a real example, I'd probably use white, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more visible here. So I just backstitch within the troll tape here and then stitch around all four sides into the collection textile. When you're stitching your label on, you wanna make sure that one, you're not using any knots on the collection textile as that can lead, cause to stress and breakage in that area. And you also wanna make sure that your stitches are going in between the individual threads of the textile as opposed to penetrating them as that can lead to breakage. Otherwise, if you have any questions about labeling textiles, I look forward to talking to you at the webinar. Thank you.